Okay, so you've heard about Ozempic and GLP-1 agonists and all of their many, many benefits, but they're pretty expensive. So we're gonna tell you today how to kind of hack your GLP-1 system and get Ooh. some of the benefits of these kinds of things without taking the pills, just with everyday stuff. You trying to sell a supplement? No, I'm okay. not selling anything, but we're gonna give you the top six. You're selling life. Okay, and not in any specific order. All right, yeah, okay. so, the, so first of all, what is GLP-1? GLP-1 stands for glucagon-like peptide number one, which is interesting because it kind of looks like glucagon, which is a hormone, mm -hmm. but it actually d does the opposite of glucagon. Well, the, because the role of GLP-1 in your body is yes. really slows down stomach emptying, yep. uh, increases se insulin secretion, yep. basically tells your brain. Lowers your blood sugar. Yeah, it yeah. tells your brain that your stomach's full. Yep. That's what the hormone does. Yes. But then the brilliant pharmaceutical companies have exploited some of these things yes. and made it so that, hey, this is going to tell you that you're full, so we're going to give you a GLP-1 agonist, so it yes. doesn't do what GLP-1 does, but it only does part of it, which is to tell you that you're full, yep. to try and reduce the amount of food you eat, other things as well, to try and reduce your weight. And the things we're talking about have been tested, so they've done scientific studies to measure your GLP-1 levels after these interventions, mm -hmm. not necessarily in specific randomized controlled trials, but ways to kind of validate that doing this increases your GLP-1 yeah. activity, which is in us all the time. So you get this benefit of taking these medications, Without taking the medication, which, the side which we would always say we would rather have always. you live a healthy life always. than take a pill. So always. the guy that is typing, hey, big pharma shills, you can just delete that comment no, and go back. We are not big pharma. <laughs> No. Okay, so number one is eating foods that are high in fiber. So a lot of people, not a lot of people, a small number of people say, oh, fiber's dumb. It's like unnecessary. It ends up out of your body. Anyway, what's the point? So fiber does a bunch of healthy things. But number one here is it makes you feel full. And that satiety leads to increased GLP-1 secretion. All right. Just like taking a GLP-1 agonist. There you go. Number one. Number two is protein. Yes. If you ingest protein, that does increase satiety as well. Right. You will feel more full after you've eaten a meal rich in protein compared yep. to one that is void of protein. Right, and we've talked before, your body can't tell whether the protein is from a plant or from an animal because it gets broke down to its constituent amino acids. Mm -hmm. So just healthy sources of regular protein throughout the day is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. Number three is healthy fat. So we always hear, fats, oh, wait, fats, are, fats? fats are bad for me, aren't they? Well. Fat. Trans fats are bad for you, saturated fats are bad for you, but there are healthy fats. And these are from foods like avocados, nuts, olive oil, obviously in limited quantities because they are very calorically dense, but these healthy fats increase your GLP-1 levels. All right, okay. I'll buy that. Okay. The next one is the one thing that I think <laughs> is the most important pillar of Critical. health. And you know what? People, as people, we don't need to be taught as much as we need to be reminded. Agreed. That's a good point. Right? Good point. And it's exercise. Right. Exercise will have similar effects to your GLP-1 agonists in terms of making you feel like I don't need to eat right now and I don't have this. And this ties into the pillars of health that we always talk and about, it's right? it's weird because you exercise and you feel I'm going to be starving after exercise. Yeah. But if you ever, and this happened to me last night, I was pretty hungry when I came home from work, but yeah. I was in a rush. I went to the gym yeah. and I said, I'm going to eat after the gym. And after the gym, I was like, you know what? I don't feel that hungry anymore. Interesting. But I still ate. Maybe it's because of the GLP-1. I betcha. Okay, it might have played a role. Betcha. Okay, I like yeah. that. No, number yeah. five is intermittent fasting. So we've talked a little bit about different dietary plans, and intermittent fasting is definitely not for everybody, but this is where you have a controlled eating window, whether it's 18-6, 16-8. There's a host of different um, algorithms and mechanisms that we can do this. But what it does, it reduces the amount of time that you can eat, so your body goes into a period of fasting on a regular basis. And this has been shown to increase your GLP-1 levels. And maybe that's one of the ways that it helps for weight loss for some people. Okay. The next last one, one, the last one is uh -huh. cold. Cold plunging, exposing yourself to cold. I, no one does this voluntarily, no, do they? Do I you, wonder if, if anyone's do. ever looked if Canadians have higher <laughs> levels of GLP-1 in the winter compared to other countries. Well, I can vouch for this one. <laughs> we were skiing a few weekends okay. ago on a super windy, super cold day. It's been cold this year and okay. we've had so much snow oh since then. I was with my daughter and we're on the chairlift and the chairlift gets stuck. Oh, the worst. At and the you're just swaying. At the windiest, in coldest the wind. part. And I'll tell you, the last thing on my mind was, boy, I could really go for a rich meal right now. See, but next time that happens, you can sit there and go, Farah, it's okay. Our GLP-1 levels are going up. This is actually really good for us. GLP levels are <laughs> through the roof along with a lot of other hormones that were going on as we were stuck up there for 10 minutes. That's a long time. That was terrifying. That's Especially long because we just seen that movie about the people that get stuck in the chairlift. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, they die. Oh, Spoiler no. alert. 
Oh, know, gee whiz. Yeah. Okay, so, so now you know, top six ways to naturally increase your GLP-1 levels. It play an important role in um, weight control, sugar control, other, there, there are growing, growing benefits seen with GLP-1 agonists, with your, with your heart, with your brain, with your kidneys. So these are something that's inside of us all the time, but we can just increase their levels by doing the things that we've talked about before. Yeah. So eating healthy, exercise, considering intermittent fasting, and maybe even cold exposure if that's your thing. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment if you do any of these things or if you know something else that might increase your GLP-1 levels. Remember, you are in charge of your own health and your GLP-1 levels. We'll see you next time. And hey, don't forget to check out our podcast over on Spotify and coming soon to Apple.